Not everyone is your ideal client. Hey, this is Donnie Bovine, the CEO and founder of Success Champions Networking and the author of Endless Stream of Referrals. This is Growth Mode, a podcast where we talk about sales, business development, and how to scale and grow your business. Hanging out with me, as always, is Kevin Snow, the sales and automation tactician and genius. And in this episode, we're going to dive into your client avatar and why not everyone is your ideal client. So understanding your ideal client is is key to being able to effectively sell sell your services. When I launched Time on Target, I had a pretty clear idea who I wanted to work with and who my avatar was. I was really focused on tech firms. And uh, and that's who I sold to, software as a service companies, MSP companies, uh, cybersecurity firms. If you did some sort of tech, uh, it is going to, I wanted to be in front of you and, and working with you and helping you launch your sales team or fix your sales team. I had no idea as my my product and services changed, my my uh, my avatar didn't change with it, and I didn't realize it needed to. I had nowhere in my radar that I need to be working with loud, obnoxious people. <laughs> so, yeah. it, you know, once I got that in front of me, you know, and understanding who that you know that was an avatar for me and i had specific things i could do for them better than other people it, it changed how my business operated and it's it's really helped me identify all right so here are my key people i've also you know going through that change really identified hey here are people that i don't want to work with because they don't get what i do and they aren't able to benefit it and it ends up making me look bad when i work with them yeah for sure. You know, I, I kind of went through the same journey when, when I first started Success Champions. I was really, I don't know, I had this weird idea of being some sort of motivational speaker, coach type thing. I, I was so confused when I first launched my business. So I was going after broke minded people, meaning, mm -hmm. meaning people that that just were looking for a leg up or looking for a, almost a handout. And it took me a little while to realize that, man, I didn't want to work with broke minded people. I wanted to work with the badasses. I wanted to work with people that, you know, were GSDs that really wanted to get shit done and were finding success in life. And when I started getting focused on the right people, um, my business really started taking off. And I think we've found with running Success Champions Networking, with the Champions Table Mastermind, with the Badass Business Summit, that the more we stay focused on what we call GSDs, the get shit done type of people, uh, we're finding tremendous success on getting dialed in and, and scaling the business as a whole. But you know, Kevin, a lot of people, when you tell them to niche down and, and find that perfect ideal client avatar, they immediately want to pick a fight because they're like, man, you're limiting me on, you know, business growth because I could literally sell to anybody. And you and I both know <laughs> that if you try and sell to anybody, you're selling to nobody, you know? So what do you typically tell somebody when they're like, man, I, I don't like this whole idea of getting one specific avatar? Well, I, I think my conversation with them all is focused around the word focus. You know, it's, it is the whole idea of, you know, in sales, you're out hunting and, you know, the what you can hit with a shotgun compared to a rifle is completely different. And that's really what the avatar does. It lets you get some precision in your marketing. It lets you get precision in your messaging and how you actually target prospective clients as opposed to doing this huge ass net that where you're trying to capture everyone and, and, and things start to slip through because it's too wide of a net. Um, so it's really key, you know, for my clients to understand specifically who they want to target, because we're going to utilize information from that uh, persona, that personality 
to make sure that we are saying the right things at the right time and giving them the right type of information and serving it to them where they're actually going to be at. You know, a lot of businesses have that issue where they're trying to cast that white net. They just go on Facebook and they do ads or they'll go on Twitter or one of the social media, you know, Google and pay do paid placement. But are your people actually there? And that's really the key of going through that exercise of identifying your avatar, not only to know who they are and who they're not, but to know where they are and where they're not so that you're not spending a ton of money on things that are never going to get seen by them. Yeah, for sure. I love that. You know, and what's fascinating to me is this is how avatars are always explained and it's not wrong, right? Let me, let me clarify it before I, I dive in a little bit further, but everybody always talks about avatars from the perspective of helping you get focused on where you need to go. And I think it's only a portion of the overall story. You know, when you pick an avatar, you, you 100% clarify your messaging, you clarify your position in the marketplace you know, and you start talking specifically in your marketing and all your materials and everything to that that purpose, I, that person. I absolutely agree. But for me, getting your avatar really defined is so you become referable. And what I mean by that is, is if you serve everybody, I don't know who to introduce you to. Right. I don't know who to open doors for. And I think this is a part that most people miss when it comes to defining who you want to work with. It, it, you know, I can go back to like the days when I sold commercial printing. You know, I say, always used to tell people that I look for people who put ink on paper, right? You know, who pe people who do brochures and, you know, booklets and business cards and anything that would put ink on paper. Nobody would necessarily, you know, come up with names of people they can introduce me to. But I could say things like, hey, what was the last junk direct mail piece you got in the mail? And they're like, oh, my God, I can't stop getting the Home Depot stuff or I can't stop getting, you know, the the direct TV stuff or or whatnot. I'm like, cool. I'm looking for introductions into Home Depot. I'm looking for introductions into direct TV, you know, and I could get more laser focused by getting them to understand the level of clientele I was looking for. If I said that I was looking for business cards, somebody would be like, oh, my cousin, you know, Eddie um, has a auto shop and he needs business card. You make a phone call and you're getting an introduction to 500 business cards for 50 bucks, you know, and, you know, there's there's no money in it for the company or myself. But you tell people that you're looking for, you know, take a look at your mailbox and look at the direct mail pieces in there. What's the ones you're getting over and over again? And tell me those companies, tell me those names. And and the more specific, you know, you can get, the easier are to refer. It's like, you know, I have a, a friend of mine that is a real estate agent in the South Magnolia side of Fort Worth, Texas. Like, literally, if you want to get a house in this neighborhood, you have to go through Hannah, right? Nobody else even really hardly tries to sell in this neighborhood because they know she knows damn near every homeowner. She knows the history behind every house, you know, and it's a high profile community. So if you really want to get in, especially in a market where, you know, 20, 30 offers were going on homes, you weren't going through Hannah. You were going to lose that deal because she just knew the heartbeat of it. So, and it got really, really cool to watch her build her business because everybody knew that if you wanted that neighborhood, you, you were focused on. It. So she would literally say, I'm the real estate agent of South Magnolia and, and everybody knew it. So she made it really, really easy to refer. So if, if a realtor found somebody who wanted in South Magnolia, you're like, well, then you got to go work with Hannah, you know? So defining this niche, this client avatar, specifically who you want to target and work with is ultimately. So you make it easy for the world to open doors for you, make it easy for the people to actually refer you because they can readily come up with names at the top of their head. I think part of it, especially for a new entrepreneurs and new business owners, is that they're you know they're they're desperate for cash. They're mm. looking to get sales, and they sure. are you know to them that I'll work with anyone. I'll, you know I'll do anything I need to for them, and that's and that setting yourself up for failure. 
you know, I, when I did the pivot from the consulting to really focusing on the automation and sales process development for clients, I started, ooh, someone needs a website. Well, I can do websites and I would do websites because it would be a nice influx of cash flow and it would take a ton of time that I wasn't then focused on growing my core business. And I think that's that way, really- That's a key point. That's that's the, the why people do that is exactly what you said because yep. it feels like you're being productive building websites and stuff. And, and that's why you're whoring yourself yeah. out to anything to say yes. Totally. I, I It brought in money and I got to pay for my house and, and eat food for Christmas. It was awesome. <laughs> so, um, but- Wait, were you fucking Tiny Tim? Yes. <laughs> at, Maybe at times- <laughs> It's a- Amazing goose, mom. Uh, <laughs> so I think it's really key that people start this early because otherwise they're going to go down these rabbit holes. It's actually going to slow down their development of their business and it's going to slow their cash flow. And for those of us that are in service industries where we do monthly recurring revenue, it's going to slow down the development of that. And that MRR is king. Oh, for sure. For sure. You know, and uh, I think people, and I've heard people say this, they, they say things like, I don't want to be put into a box. You know, I don't want people to, to think that's only people that I can work with. And defining your ideal client avatar, you know, your ICA, you know, your perfect customer, whatever the fuck you want to call it, high priority target, I think Kevin calls them, mm -hmm. you know, um, however you want to define that isn't putting you in a box. It's defining to you and the world that this is the caliber of people you want to work with. This is the caliber of companies you want to work with. It's, you know, you go back to the difference, the difference between Eddie's auto shop. There's nothing wrong, I, Eddie. I hope I never have to bring my car to you if there is an Eddie you know, <laughs> auto shop out there, right? But, you know, versus going for the print buyer at Home Depot. You know, it's a massive difference in helping people wrap their head around, you know, what you're looking for and, and how to get there. And I think to your point, Kevin, is when people come out the gate, they're they're so desperate to have some sort of success that they say yes to everything. But I'll put one caveat on that. Sometimes that early on saying yes to everything is the key to helping you define your avatar. Because I think for a lot of people, you got to go through a lot of shit clients and people that you to find out who you don't want to work with, you know, specifically. So you can absolutely figure out who's that ideal person to, to work for. Well, and people think it's limiting, but it's not. There are going to be people outside of your specific avatar profile that your messaging is still going to resonate with. And they're going to see what you're doing and say, wow, I want to talk to that person. And then you get the cool thing is as a business owner, you actually get to decide if that person's a fit or not. And, you know, just because they don't have the same industry or same title doesn't mean that they aren't actually in that avatar and that they don't fit what you're looking for in a client. I don't I used to do a lot of financial stuff and discover they're not really my favorite client. And I now currently have an accounting client that fit with the avatar for what I was looking for for clients. And the cool thing is I got to decide if I want to take money yep. from that person or not. And that's also a big step for a lot of business owners, that ability to say no and mm. make decisions. But that avatar really now gives you that framework to say, hey, you know, I'd love to work with you, but you're not really a good fit for me or I'm not a good fit for you. Let me introduce you to someone else. Or to say, yeah, you're an awesome fit because you click all these boxes in my avatar. Let's Let's do this. Let's go yep. big. And, th and that's really that checkbox for the business owner to make sure they are working with the right businesses and taking the right money and not just taking any money. Dude. And, and if you've listened to other episodes, Kevin and I talk about how the, the importance of disqualifying in the sales process. And that's 100 percent what he's describing is, is when you know specifically who that person is, the caliber of that individual, that company you want to work with, you could spend the time of that call disqualifying that person and that whole 
disqualifying mentality, you know, allows you to have a lot more powerful, real conversations because you're taking away that desperation move of, oh my God, I got to sell everybody. Oh, please let me, you know, do business with this person. And you're actively getting into this real conversation of, of, you know, Tell me about your world. What successes have you found in the past? You know, what makes this great? What makes this awesome? You know, and you're deciding, is this a type of person that you proactively want to work with? And it's it's a powerhouse position and move in that sales conversation. But if you don't know what the avatar is, you don't know the ideal person, you don't know what questions you should be asking. You don't know what things you should know about that individual to decide if they're a good fit to work for you, work with you, I should say. I uh, yeah, for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's you. That, that's a good point. Avatars can be for your employees as well. Here's what a good employee looks like. So, uh, well, let's every- talk about that for a really, really quick. That's okay. a great point. So, I mean, we just recently had an interaction where I had somebody join one of our, our meetings of a project we're working on, and she came in like a powerhouse, you know, and started asking the right questions, asking about the right situations, and was, you could tell, somebody who actually gave a shit about how they do things. And I had people after the meeting, they're like, man, that was a tough meeting. In my head, I'm like, that was a fucking great meeting. That was everything that I was hoping it was going to be because I need that person that is higher caliber can go toe to toe with me and understands the overall mission and, you know, doesn't require Kevin and I do so much heavy lifting. So when you know the caliber of people that you want to work with, have an avatar internally, It's a massive growth movement for your business as a whole as well. I just thought it was a key point. Cool. All right. So every week, if you've been listening to the podcast regularly, you know we take a question from one of our members at the Success Champions Network chapters. This week, our question comes from Brian Morell. He is uh, with Curcio Printing, and he is a member of the Empire Elites in upstate New York. His question is, how does your avatar differ if you are a service-based business instead of a product-based business? I don't think there's a whole lot of difference at the end of the day. Now, as you start out, service-based, product-based, there is initially a different avatar. Let me explain. With a product, you typically are going to an end consumer, right? Um, So you may have a more defined consumer avatar, an individual person. When you're selling a service, (coughs) unless you're selling B2C, you're going to have more of a company avatar, right? More of a company structure and an entity. The trick is, is even inside that company, you still have the individual who makes the buying decisions. So it's almost like an additional avatar. So you take Eddie's freaking auto shop and his 500 business cards versus Home Depot direct mailer. Eddie makes a call at the auto shop. The print production manager makes a call at Home Depot. But what happens if I get to Home Depot and that person's not of the higher caliber type of individual I want to work with? You still got to define inside the company who you want to get to. What are your thoughts, bud? So I I agree with the the product. You tend to be much more B to C. So you're going to have a very defined, you're going to have a really detailed avatar. You're going to know, you know, uh, surfing habits on the web, what types of things they search for, where they hang out on social media, uh, you know, interests. You're going to have all that type of information. So you can really target your messaging to get in front of them with the service base. For most of that, that is a that is a B2B. So it's going to be really understanding the state of development for that business and where they're at. You know, you don't necessarily for an individual, all right, so where are they at in their growth life cycle? That's not necessarily a thing unless you're targeting a specific uh, age group because of what your product is. For business, you need to understand, all right, so is the person, is the company that uses my service new? Are they at a you know first growth stage? Are they a second growth stage? Are they mature? Are they international? You need to understand where they fit in that development process. So that, and then think about, all right, so what are all the similarities between these businesses? Now, what are the similarity, similarities? 
I can't talk easy today. for you say. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I need more coffee. So what are the what are the similarities between the decision makers at those business? You know, so that now you can figure out where those people are at at the same time. But when you get get so the the service one's going to take a little more time to build because you basically have to yeah, build two. You got to build two different ones. You have the company one and then the decision maker one. And you might have a third one if it is a big enough company where you have influencers yep. who are then going to that business decision maker saying, hey, we need to do this. Here's why. You need to know how you reach them too and you're serving the right content to them. So if you're a service based, it's going to take longer to develop because you, you have multiple for the same client. Yeah, Product sure. based, you're going to have the one. Here's my end user. Here's a person who's going to pay for it. How do I target them? How do I get them to say yes? Yeah, no, I love that. Um, uh, and I love the fact that you touched on the hierarchy inside of, of, of companies. Um, you know, you start getting into the bigger, bigger sales, enterprise level sales and those type of things. You got to understand that hierarchy and dynamic to be able to get the deal done and, you know, who influences who and what does what. So, so huge move. Great thought process, bud. Um, you know, and, you know, I think, you know, overall, as people are looking at your, your avatar, um, for if you're selling to individuals, you should go check out Harvey McKay 66. If you've never looked at that, just just Google Harvey McKay, Harvey McKay 66, and you'll see a cool breakdown of all the characteristics of, you know, ICAs, ideal client avatars. Um, and, you know, the more refined you get, man, the better your business is going to be. Uh, and you're, and I think it's always going to be evolving because you're always going to be up in your caliber of people. But, you know, we have levels inside of our company. So we have success champions networking, which is, you know, a $47 a month, you know, fee. We have champions table, $500 a month fee. We have private, private clients that, you know, are paying us tens of thousands of dollars a month to, to do private coaching with Kevin and I and those type of things. And, you know, each one of those, those levels is a different avatar, you know, so you can define avatar by the level of where you're at uh, when, when you're working with them or what stage of the life they're in. So it can be the same thing. You can have different avatars for different, you know, product lines, um, different things. So define it by what you sell and then make it very, very specific for that particular thing. So um, I hope this helps you out, guys. So action item uh, is, you know, uh, why don't you walk into the action item, Kevin? All right. So the action item this week is actually about how to start developing your ideal client avatars. So what you need to do to get started is actually look at your current and your past clients. And you want to identify the one or two that you absolutely loved working with that you're like, ah, oh, it's sweet. This person's calling me again. We're going to do stuff. You know, you liked the interaction. You liked the results that you're getting. And it was really a great experience for both of you. And now talk, start writing down, look at those one or two and write down what you loved about them. And and what those characteristics were of that project or of that client engagement. So now you get to start to have that idea of what type of client and what type of work you're trying to do and what type of work you want to bring into your business. And now start breaking down all the similarities between those individuals or those companies. You know, were they all both at the same psych stage of growth? Were they in the same industry? Were they at the same revenue level? You know, what about them was the same? And that's going to start focusing you on those specific types of businesses. And then start looking at the individuals. Where do they hang out? Do they, you know, what types of interests do they have? What groups are they in on Facebook or LinkedIn? What uh, social media platforms do they use? Are they active in specific community type uh organizations and start figuring out what's the same between the ones that you liked and then start getting more of those. And that's really what doing a uh, building a client avatar is about is just figuring out all the things that are the same. Love it. 
Love it. So guys, get off your butts. Go get your avatars figured out. You know, and I'd love to hear about your avatars. Feel free to, you know, send uh, us a message. Come join the Facebook group and tell us about your client avatar. I think that'd be an awesome move. Great call to action, Kevin. Well done. Well, guys, we're going to wrap this one up. And as always, if you've got any tips, tricks, any value out of this episode whatsoever, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel on YouTube. Ring the bell so you can get notified when we bring out new episodes. If you're listening to in podcast land, make sure you are subscribed wherever you're listening and at the end of the day guys the greatest thing you can do for us is if you know one person that should hear about this episode please you know tell them how to subscribe where to listen and we'd love and appreciate you love you mean it see you bye